The following is a presentation of how the ISC CHS remote monitoring software works. The ISC CHS remote monitoring software is a multi-platform software designed to monitor different systems, brands, and models. As of today, our software allows us to monitor Hitachi, EMC, NetApp, and Oracle data storage equipment. There are two parts that will be demonstrated in this video. Our dashboard where all the hardware failures are identified and classified by severity, and the application that is installed on the customer's site. This is our dashboard. Currently, we are in the Pending Issues tab. As soon as a hardware failure occurs at the customer's site, it is shown in our dashboard. It is automatically color-coded by the type and severity of the failure. For example, red will be for critical failures, orange for serious, yellow for moderate, light yellow for service, and blue for network issues, like when the customer systems is not calling home. Our support engineers would open a service ticket by clicking on the check mark and then assigning a service call number which will be tracked in the ISC service call software. Once a call has been opened, a case number moves to the acknowledged issue page, where it will remain until the case is closed. When the case is completed, the support engineer will click on the X to close the case. The case number is then moved to the pending verification tab. The case number will remain on this tab for 24 hours. The reason for that is in case ISC CHS software opens another call with the same serial number and the same failure. It will open the same case number and not allow us to open a new case. That means that more root cost analysis is needed to be done to correct the issue. The dashboard is also used to enter the customer systems information that will be used in the installer as well as for tracking purposes. The steps are as follows. If the contract is handled by another third party or a VAR, then we enter the company name as a partner. I am going to make up a partner's name, ISC Group. Then we will select the company which is actually the customer or end user. In this case, I am selecting the partner and assigning a company under that partner's name. I have named this company XYZ Company. Once it is done, I will select and enter the different sites that will be covered under the partner. In this case, ISC Group, the company which is XYZ, and I am going to assign two different sites. The first one will be the California site, and the second one we will assign to the same partner, company, and we are going to call it the Oregon site. Now we have the partner, the company, and two different sites that we will be monitoring. Now, I will add the devices that will be monitored at the two different sites. In this case, I'm going to add the Hitachi Enterprise Unit. We'll select the Hitachi HUS VM. I will type the serial number of the system. And then, we will assign that to a partner, company, and site and in this case, the California site. In most of them, we put a description for that particular system and save it. Now I'm going to add a NetApp unit. And let's select for this example, the FAST 6280. We will assign to the same partner, ISC Group, the same company, XYZ and we will assign it to the California site as well. Type in the serial number of the first controller. 
I am also typing the IP address of that particular controller. And type the IP address of the second controller. And let's put the second serial number. Lastly, I am going to find what is going to be the date range for the remote monitoring coverage and save it. Next, let's add another system, in this case, an EMC unit from the CX4 family. Again, it's going to be under the ISC group as a partner, the company XYZ. And in this case, we are going to go to the Oregon site. Type the serial number of this specific unit. The IP address of the first controller. And the second controller. We already see that the date is for one year of remote monitoring coverage and save it. And that is how we enter all the information for the systems we monitor. We can see that we have the three systems that we just entered right here at the bottom of the page. Now that we have the systems logged into the database, we can now create our installers and send them to the customer. This is a tool we use to create the installers. I am going to create an installer for the first site in California. I will select the partner, in this case, ISC Group. The site, California. I will select the type of network connection that will be used, which is either web services, FTP, PCA modem, or RAS modem. In this case, we will select web service. We also have available a proxy server option, in case it is required by the customer for highly secure networks. Now, I'm going to add the devices. And we know that at this site, we have a Hitachi Enterprise. And I can now see the serial number, and we save it and add it to the list that will be installed. Now, we also have a NetApp unit at the same location. So, I look for NetApp and find the serial number. I save it, and it is added to the list. Now, we have the Hitachi Enterprise unit and the NetApp FAST6280. Now that I have the two devices there, my next step will be to create the installers. So, I create the installer and I basically want to paste the file to the desktop. Now we can see the file in the desktop. As you can see, this file is a .isc file. This will allow us to email this file, which is just the size of about 1.5 megabytes. Once it is in to the customer, the customer will paste this application in the desktop of the server that is the same network as the units that is to be monitored. Once installed, the only thing the customer needs to do is to rename the file and change the .isc to a .exe, which will make it an executable file. Now, we will open the file and the end user license agreement will appear. The customer has the option to install it in a different location or leave it in the C drive that is in the other program. Click OK. It will self-install. And now, we see the two units that we have. The Hitachi Enterprise and the NetApp units are here. 
and as soon as they start connecting to our servers, the red dots will change to a green light, which means that we have a connection. Our remote monitoring also allows us to make changes on the fly once this one is installed. All we need to do is go back to our dashboard and generate a password that is valid for two hours. We copy that password and send it to the customer. Then the customer double-clicks the logo on the Hitachi Remote Monitoring on his desktop and takes the password, and that will allow them to make changes to the actual remote monitoring. We can make changes to the type of communication, web server, FTP, PCA modem, or RAS modem, and also add new equipment that will be monitored. For example, we can pick from the different systems that we monitor, and in this case, let's pick Storage Tech Library. And we will enter the serial number, user, password, and all the information that is needed for us to connect to that unit and save it. We can also add another Hitachi Enterprise server and serial number. And that is all that is needed. There is no need to reinstall the software again. This concludes our presentation. We hope you enjoyed it. For more information, please email us at sales at iscgroupllc.com or call us at 1-877-472-8273, option 2. If you would like to see this presentation again and even sign up for a 30-day trial period, please go to isc-chs.com. We look forward to working with you.